Welcome to the first episode of season five of the Tapping Into podcast. There's lots to catch up on if you're new around here. This podcast is sponsored by Ovirum, an award-winning cult beauty and well-being brand steeped in ritual, powered by nature, focused on self-care and finessed by science. Pioneers in green beauty since 1931, Ovirum create high performance luxury bath and beauty products which work to restore your essential you. Applying the latest discoveries in botanical cosmetic science to expertise in aromatherapy and aromacology, Ovirum's innovative formulas made with ethically produced and sustainable ingredients are recognized internationally as best in class. If you too would like to feel relaxed, restored and renewed, thanks to Ovirum, Tapping into podcast listeners can receive an exclusive 20% discount using the code Tapping for Mums. Check out their website, ovirum.com. Today I'm chatting with my friend Katie Jane all about crystals and light language. The queen of crystals herself, Katie Jane tells us about her spiritual journey of helping spirits cross over to the other side as a child right up to working with crystals and how she came to run one of my best online crystal stores in the UK and Ireland, maybe even the world. She shares with us how to work with the crystals we have, how to cleanse and program them and make sure to have a crystal to hand when listening to this. Katie Jane leads us through a beautiful connecting journey with an amethyst, but use any crystal you can find. And she also spontaneously channels in some light language, which we then explore in more depth as the podcast progresses. Katie Jane has written a book on crystals called Crystals, How to Tap into Your Infinite Potential Through the Healing Power of Crystals, which you can find on Amazon alongside two for Oracle decks, Spirit Animal Wisdom Cards and Earth Alchemy Oracle. You can buy her ethically sourced and high vibrational crystals at andcrystals.com. She's in the middle of writing another book, runs online crystal courses and activations and hosts retreats in the UK and abroad. So keep an eye out for all of her magical offerings on Instagram, at and crystals. I absolutely loved chatting to Katie Jane and we had such a laugh recording this. And I hope you enjoy this chat and the high vibrational light language too. Leave a review or jump into my DMs and let me know what you think. Enjoy. Welcome, Katie Jane, to the Tapping Into podcast. Today, you are here to talk about crystals, but I mean, we could talk for about four hours <laughs> if we have the time. Um, yeah, right. Because you don't just do crystals, you are an amazing healer, a sound healer, an intuitive. Uh, clairvoyant um I don't know what else uh <laughs> I don't know. All the things everything yeah yeah everything <laughs> uh, I, I kind of get I've been just blushing big time when you were saying all of that I just want to hide I'm like no I'm not good at like taking you know that kind of thing self like the self-love thing is big for me <laughs> mm-hmm. well I'm gonna to. I'm gonna throw it at you and you can take what you want <laughs> <laughs> I was um lying in bed last night and I was had like it was like a movie replay of our journey together because we've actually well I came to you as a client I think it was around June 2017 and you channeled a message for me from my spirit baby uh, and daughter Alice and my grandmother and a couple of other things came through and then um from then we just fell into this connection this friendship we I took you to Ireland to like heal my family and friends (laughs) that was so fun (laughs) mental but fun like (laughs) action back you did back-to-back sessions for like two and a half (laughs) days straight I think you must have collapsed when you got home with um, your incredible family who are amazing and so gifted and powerful that was just so great yeah. meeting them can yeah. see where you get it all from now <laughs> <laughs> your, your powerful hands <laughs> from your father. yeah I I know yeah I'm very very lucky that we have a very open and spiritual and very intuitive connected. family yeah yeah and Sorry. then oh yeah and then we, <laughs> we ended up 
in Aubergine Island together on Lionsgate Portal 2018. Yeah. Sleeping in a, um, a bell tent, holding hands in the midst of the middle of a thunderstorm. Oh, yes. On, on the day that <laughs> Trump got inaugurated. Like an electric bolt that hit the island and like split in two, like loads of the trees. And there was, yes. it was really intense and fiery, but wonderful. Amazing <laughs> experience with you. Yeah, I know. I, do you know what? I was thinking the same thing. Our journey has been really epic from the first meetup of talking to Alice, which was just so heart opening and so special to have that connection with you through her um to like the adventures in Glastonbury yes. <laughs> in Croatia <laughs> we've done it all <laughs> oh my god we have we have and hopefully many more adventures to come in the future yeah yeah definitely yeah so tell me a little bit about yourself and your journey of awakening and clairvoyance uh, and because that led you to crystals <laughs> Yeah, it did. Um, well, oh gosh, you know, <laughs> so much. It's like, where do I start? But I, I suppose I've, I've always had, I've always been able to see. Um, I believe we have all of the gifts. We do. We have all of the gifts of senses. It's just some are stronger than others, depending on our past life experience and, and where we've really kind of pushed ourselves. And for me, it's always been third eye seeing, um, which wasn't so fun when I was little, when I was a bit, like very young and I used to see spirits. And I swear my first best friend was a spirit. Like, I, you know how sometimes children have imaginary friends and they, they the parents, there was an imaginary friend. Mine wasn't imaginary, it was just a spirit. <laughs> that I used to talk to and they thought oh she's got an imaginary friend but no my spirits were my friends I'd see um lost uh disincarnates so spirits that have stayed on the earth plane after passing out of confusion and not knowing kind of where they are or just through routine um so I used to connect with them and see them in in on the land wherever I used to go friends houses um and I didn't really know what to do with that so I've, I've always seen uh, spirit so I've kind of been really tuned into the spirit plane there are lots of different planes of existence um as we know and, and one of them is spirits where the mediums work from um so I kind of started there as you know that was where I, I saw things and then but but all the while angels have been a really big part of my life um I my earliest memories are angels singing to me or hearing tuning into the angelic plane and just hearing the most beautiful sound that actually when you tune into it it's enough to bring you to, to tears because it's so pure and so beautiful and it opens your heart so I used to feel like I had the angels singing to me all the time so that was really beautiful and I felt really held but as with anything you know you close it down as you as you grow and you want to fit in um, and it didn't really awaken until my early 20s, the, the seeing the spirits really came back in force. And I, I learned from them, actually, from the angels, how to cross them over. Um, so I would kind of go about my day. <laughs> I know whatever I was doing, uh, it was a footwear designer or a university at the time and school or whatever. And I'd be crossing spirits over that I saw in, in different spaces and places. And people started to come to me to ask for like house clearings and um, to connect with past relatives and it became something that I did and really enjoyed um and then oh gosh yeah how it opened up even more I had my son and I think I was uh it was in my 30s I was pregnant with Arlo when I was 29 uh 28 actually and I had him when I was 29 and it just well you know how it is with birth it's an initiation isn't it Sarah like mm -hmm. nothing is the same again no. it's wonderful and messy and <laughs> so much and there's so much joy um so I was at that time I was working as a footwear designer and I had been for 12 years and I just loved it I was working in London with some incredible brands and doing amazing shows and and it was great uh, and I loved it but then I had Arlo and everything changed and everything just opened up like and they say actually don't they when you're pregnant your senses like intensify and 
with Arlo, it was quite scary because it was the opposite for me. I was cut off, like but I wasn't cut off. I knew I wasn't cut off, but I'd, all these senses I'd been honing in, like my psychic set, my clairvoyance, I, you know, I'm clairsentient, so I really feel I'm clairconsient, I'm clair, I'm all of them, but really strong with clair audio as well, hearing. Everything just went. And I, I knew he was safe and he was fine. And I, I kind of knew that like everything was going to be fine. He communicated. So all of the outside noise stopped. All of the, the, the spirit guides like talking to me. It was just me and Arlo and I could hear Arlo's voice more than anything all the way through. So that was a comfort, but it did feel like it was a rite of passage. Something was switching and shifting within me, but um, I felt whole, held the whole time. And he came and then it was just, oh my goodness. Um, I, uh, you know how the universe aligns. The, when you're on the right track, everything just ping, 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 ping lights up and everything becomes easy and it comes to you. And that's just the way it is like that total surrender and trust to it. So I'd started to do in my uh, I'd started to have more people come to me for past life um, sessions. One of my passions is from a very from a very young age, I've traveled to the Akashic, but not known it's the Akashic. So for me, I'd say from the age of consciously from the age of seven, I remember I'd fall asleep and I'd lucid dream. I remember all my dream travels. They call it lucid dreaming. But I'd go to this one place, which was this library, and it was it looked a bit like Hogwarts. <laughs> and I'd go in through this beautiful, uh, or as a spiral staircase, <laughs> and I'd go down the spiral staircase, and there'd always be a key, and I'd open the doors. So there was always this really beautiful process of getting in and going into the inner scape of like my consciousness and my psyche. And I'd open the door, and it'd be this grand library, like it was so beautiful and old rows and rows of books which were endless and endless and endless and so much light and I'd always be pulled into a table there'd be these beautiful ornate oak tables down the center with chairs around them and there was so much life in that room and I used to go deeper into this library space and go to the same table and I'd sit and all my guides would just come in and sit around the table so I'd see Saint Germain uh Palace, Palace Athena, like Goddess Athena was always there with me, Confucius, Buddha, like some really like, <laughs> now I wow. think about it, they're quite heavy. <laughs> Big just... hitters. You've gone straight to the top there, Kenny Jane. <laughs> no messing, no messing here with me. No. <laughs> and with literally, and obviously for my young mind to compute it, it would be a book that I'd open and it would be my records. I saw it as a book, but as we know, it's not really a book. It's in this field of, of information that's all around us if we tune into it. And I'd see, I'd talk to my guides about my life. I'd talk about my experiences, my karma, my patterns. And that was from a really young age. I was very aware of the Akashic. I didn't know it was called the Akashic. Mm -hmm. So I've always been able to just see past lives. I go into that space in my mind in, because it becomes with this work and you know this Sarah it becomes instantaneous like the power of wherever your thought goes energy flows like it's this instant connection so I'd go there and I'd see people's past lives like I was in them like it was like almost like I couldn't say it was like a movie like I was watching so I was actually in it and I could feel it and I could smell it and then I could relate to them. We could go to like, and you've done, I think you might have done past life healing with me. I'm not sure we might've mm. gone there, but I know you do a lot of that work as well, don't you? Like, Yeah, but, I've started got, to go into the records and using it with clients and it's become an amazing um, practice. And like that, it's immersive, isn't it? Like I'm, I'm in it observing it rather mm. than watching it like a movie. Yeah, I, I yeah. totally agree with that, yeah everything is it's just surrounds you and and what you can do then is you can go to the key moments in that life you can call them forward where patterns have the core of patterns have started and you can go start tracing back through lives and it's an incredible tool I love I'm so passionate about past life healing um and then you know a term that you brought to me Sarah actually which I love is re-imprinting the matrix which <laughs> I never really heard it as that word but that's what I was doing we were re-imprinting the memory of these lives to you know see them as they are and, and just understand and witness them and not maybe necessarily wanting to paint them over all glossy and rainbow coated because we can't do that but just bring that level of understanding and love into it and re-imprinting it with love so I love that I learned that from you that was really nice that term mm -hmm. but that was a lot about what I did too and I think that's why we connect so much um so I'm getting to crystals don't worry um 
<laughs> keep going I love it it's my kind of chat I know we go every, all, all around the uh, what's it all around the houses <laughs> yeah around the houses that's the same um so then so I was doing this wonderful footwear design job but then people started seeing me for past life readings and I just started doing them in the in my own time and and channeled writing so automatic writing where you connect in and you just write I've always had such a love of writing I've written a book I've written the oracle decks that I've done have just been a joy and a journey for me um and I remember when I was growing up and I was searching you know I'd lost my dad I knew he was still around, I could feel him, but I couldn't really get much from him. There was very much a block there of pain, um, that, you know, abandonment and and what else, rejection that was coming up. So I I held him at arm's length without really knowing, but I knew he was there. And I remember I saw, I don't see many healers um, because I'm quite protective of my energy field. And I do feel like I should really go into whatever I'm holding and try and understand it myself first. So, but I, but when I was growing up, I wanted to understand, I was reaching out and I remember I saw a psychic and she was this wonderful old woman who lived round by me in the West Midlands, like Birmingham way. And um, she did automatic writing. So I went in and for an hour she sat and she just wrote, and I'm so inspired by this. And my dad came through and he said, you know, what he said in the writing with Katie Jane, you have such a wonderful way with words that people really connect with. And that the energy that I carry through words is, is so light that I need to be writing. And that was when I was about, I think I was early twenties. And that's always stuck with me that like, through whatever I've done, sorry, I'm getting a little, well, I'm not sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional. Yeah, this is lovely. <laughs> but whatever I've done is that, when I write I know my heart is so open and it carries through the words it transcends through the words and you feel that so that's why you know I'm writing more books at the moment but that's another conversation so I always knew writing so anyway automatic writing came in for me and I was doing past life readings through channeling through writing which just flowed loved it and then what came in was the crystals so I'd start to see crystals in people's light body and I'd be like, okay, you need to work with this, this, and this stone. Um, or maybe not so direct as saying you need to, but think about working with this mm-hmm. because this is how it wishes to support you. Um, and I'd get all the messages from the crystal. It would be talking to me like a spirit would, like, or an ascended master or a goddess. And it wasn't just the crystal and the crystal divas around it. It was actually the guardians, the oversoul of that crystal. So when I tune into the crystal, many say goddess would come in as a protector and give messages too. So I'd say, you know, these crystals would be great. And I'd tell them them by name and, and how to work with them. I'm really passionate about not saying this is what it would do, but opening the space for you to explore what this crystal will do in your body and how this energy, how you perceive energy um, is the biggest lesson really to, that you really need to sit with uh, to open any of this up. And anyway, after that came the inevitable question where can I get that crystal from? (laughs) And I must admit, I love, at that point, I didn't have many crystals myself. I love them. I've always been into rocks. Like when I was younger, I collected dirty old dusty rocks. (laughs) That's what I love. (laughs) But to me, like, that's a very shamanic thing too, actually, just asking the earth permission for this beauty. Sometimes you don't need to take it, you know, you just need to it, appreciate it but sometimes there's moments and my son does this a lot will be out and I see him collecting rocks and putting them in his pocket and I'd said to him the other day we're out for a walk actually and he, he passed me a stone he's like mommy I'd really like this stone for my altar and I was like oh he's like I just really like he didn't I just know we were at a church actually and we're walking along the side of this church and we, we were talking to some of the beautiful yew trees that were in the church and he yeah he picked it up and said I'd like to can you hold it for me and I I said what I always say is like have you asked permission (laughs) for that stone have you asked spirit of place you know is it okay to take it he's like yes it's okay like yeah mom (laughs) stop telling me this (laughs) and he puts on his altar so I was a bit like that when I was little I was more like you know it didn't have to be sparkly it it was like something from the earth that was a gift that I just treasured um so anyway they're asking me where to get the crystals from I did not know so I just thought I should be doing that. Like I can't, I can't recommend somewhere. I don't know anywhere. And also I think for me, the practices of how 
this stone is taken from the earth is so important. Like I said, with the stones, just that I pick up on my walks, I have to ask, you have to apply to the guardians. It's such a respect that's that's needed and needed to be honoured. So I was like, okay, so if I can provide them, then I can know exactly where they come from and be able to give that visibility. Because I think there's a lot of stones on sale and, you know, it's such a beautiful and trendy thing. <laughs> it's yeah. crystal, you know? Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing because more and more people are working with them. So that's really positive. But I think there's a lot of sellers out there. And I speak to other people who sell crystals that there's so many fakes, one of all. And the second thing is a lot of people are selling things. They have no idea what they're selling to the point where they're calling them the wrong thing. Um, so I think that's the problem because I, I was speaking to one crystal seller who said that, you know, she was doing live sales. Now, that's a whole other conversation. I don't particularly I never do live sales. I don't really mm. agree with them personally because I think it diminishes. It depends how you do it. You know, I'm not bad mouthing any live sales, but I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but I was she was saying that she did live sales and um, her neighbor had got a wind of what this woman was doing. and She's making a lot of money from crystal live sales. And she said, um, so then the next thing she finds out is her neighbor's been on eBay and bought some big bags of wholesale tumble stones and was doing the same thing on Etsy or I don't know, wherever she was finding it. And she was making a lot of money. And she was like, she said the same things I've just said is that she didn't even know what they were called. She mm. got the names wrong. Um, didn't even know, hadn't probably had, just hadn't had the time to really sit with the stones and actually listen and work with them and you know the whole process that goes into how I work with my crystals is it's like I will okay zooming back <laughs> to the story I started <laughs> I started and crystals I can't tell you what date um it was very like it just it just happened it, I like, remember <laughs> I remember you sending me that first logo and your Instagram account like oh I've just started this what do you think? Mm. And I was like, oh, wow, amazing. And then within like a day or two, you had mm. thousands of followers. It just blew up really yeah. fast. It's like I was saying, Sarah, like when you know you're you're doing the right thing, it's, it's easy. Yeah. And um, loads of things. So I found, first of all, the supplier found me. And that was really honorable. And I understood that she would go and, and actually visited the mines. She had a very personal relationship. So I started working with her, which which set set me up basically, and and it was it was a really lovely uh, relationship. Um, I still know her to this day. Um, she knows by name everyone who's got her crystals. She has specific people she goes to for specific things. It's very traceable. Um, mm. Then it opened up to me um, finding someone, and again this happened in a really beautiful and easy way. Um, a a person in Brazil I love crystals from Brazil like for me the quartz the amethyst the rose quartz fr from Brazil is f the best the energy in the ground there in minor joints is where it comes from a lot of it um it's a, a big big but it's a big big place in itself with lots of separate towns and they're all mining towns um the energy in Brazil I think a lot about it is is the energy of the land where the crystal comes from as well and the people who obviously who get the crystals who dig for the crystals are very important because in my eyes they're guardians um they have a responsibility so I in Brazil I work with a small family and um I can't even tell you how I found this guy. It just was so divinely organized and orchestrated that he couldn't really speak. He doesn't speak English. He's called Marcelo. And he, um, my friend um, Luciana is a translator and he's a, his family mine on their land. Uh, quartz, Lemurian quartz uh, in particular, which is my favorite. Quartz is, you can't go wrong with clear quartz. It's like the one crystal that you should have in your, in your toolbox for expansion. Uh, for like it's an amplifier it's a conduit it's a master healer it aligns if you wish it to so many parts of your energy body in different layers through your aura it does so much um <laughs> that uh yes he minds his own his his family mind so my crystals are directly from him so I know I know the grandmother that's cleaned the stones I know the cousin that's helped pull them from the ground Marcelo digs for himself in a very conscious way he sends me photographs of the land of the plants he communes with nature so for me it's like 
oh, this is, I really felt it when I met him. Wow. I was like, this is a true guardian. He also goes out to other mines and other families and she teaches them how to work their land and to open up pockets in their land. So he gives back a lot to the community. That's really important to him. So I have this beautiful relationship with him where my Lemurians come from and my clear courts and my, you know, whatever courts it is he has, smoky courts, included courts. Like it, it all comes from Brazil and I can trace it back to him. And I love that, that it's only his family and me that have touched this stone. And that's important. And there's not many people who sell crystals that can say that. But that opens a whole conversation with ethics. And um, the problem is, because so many people are thinking, oh, it's really easy to start selling crystals. I'll just do it. I'll buy a bag off wholesale off eBay or wherever they go. There's a lot of crystal sellers on Instagram now that will just approach you and say, you know, I sell these, you know, you know whatever. And I, most of the time, no, 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 no. It's OK. I have, you know, I have my own sources, but it's easy to find places to buy it from. Um, the problem is when you're starting up, you're not going to be buying huge quantity to work with people like I do directly. They want you to buy a, a big quality a quantity, sorry. And a lot of the mines they sell in tonnage. So you, I mean, there might be one beautiful piece of amethyst that I'm like, oh, that's for me. That's, that's, I know that's got a place here, but they're like, no, you can't have that. You've got to buy all of that. And wow. these small people who are starting up can't do that kind of quantity so they're gonna mm. have to go to other places where they can't really check or guarantee what they're buying that's just the way so we can't really bad mouth them like it's yeah. just the way it has to be until they can I've only got to this point because I can build up a large you know I have a following where I know that I can sell it you know in in the way yeah. of not I can find the guardians for it and and pass it on to the right people but it, it's hard it, there's and, and the crystal industry like is the mining industry is not regulated um it makes me really uncomfortable when I read some of the stories of how they blast crystals out of the ground in China because <clears throat> mm. it's big business and in Madagascar where you know you don't necessarily know who's digging for your crystals it could be children it could be you know all of that is a conversation um and I always say to people one I love crystals I'm really passionate about them but I understand that we don't need crystals like we only need ourselves when we're tuning mm -hmm. in they're wonderful tools for expansion enlightenment connection but you don't need them and I would always say just really think about what you have and always rehome crystals there'll be crystals in your collection now that you're like oh I haven't worked with that a lot and it's not really lighting up you know for me I'm not wanting to hold it or have it close so maybe there's someone else going to have it and I really think it's important we start passing passing them on um but um yes oh gosh where else was I going with <laughs> well that was quite a journey uh, no that was a journey there was something else that wanted to come then but I've lost it so maybe in a minute it will come back it will, it will come, come back. back. Yeah. Wow. So that's, you know, I'm that's holding one of oh. your pieces while we're talking as well. Um, yeah, so crystals, I just wanted to say, actually, yes. So I started and crystals because they started coming to me and I was like, I want to be able to provide them with the story. Like my mm. thing is the stones with the story. Like I tune in, I listen, I honor every crystal that arrives with me. I create a ceremony. I really welcome. I sit with, I won't necessarily sell them in my shop for months until I feel that they're ready. It's not, it's not like a business for me. And my husband goes mad at me. He's like, you do, you're not business minded. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I find it so hard. I just go with the flow. I'm like, I'm, I'm like, he's like, what, have you got like a price structure? No, I've got no price. I just asked the crystals. How much do you <laughs> like, seriously, I'm making a joke of it, but that is how I am. Like, it, I think some people, they're just, they don't like my mom, bless her, who's very entrepreneurial and very business, business, business. She just, like I literally she can't get she just doesn't get me at all she's just like how are you doing all this and how is it working because you have no <laughs> I know I know I have no plan <laughs> um but no um the, one of the big things for me two big things that happened on my journey which just made me just I just knew that I'm doing exactly what I should be doing with the crystals was within I'd say the first six months it could have been the first year I don't know my time kind of merges and blends a bit but I remember there's a shop in in the UK called Anthropology 
love that shop. <laughs> so I remember going into that shop um, with Phil and my son and I said, I, I know my crystals are going to be in here. And it wasn't like a, a, a like a uh, arrogance thing. It was just it's just an inner knowing. It, it was just like, I know they're going to be here. Um, because by that point I'd started healing boxes. Um, my big thing at the beginning with Anne Crystals was to provide the crystals, but also the advice and the ways of using it instead of just putting it on the side and saying, that's a pretty crystal. Mm -hmm. I wanted to give the information. I'm very much about like teaching and guiding. So I do his crystal healing boxes. And I started up a monthly thing where it was like a monthly crystal box. Um, and anyway, I'd got, uh, I'd been in anthropology felt whatever and saw whatever I, I saw and said that to my, my husband and I'd say I'd say very soon after I got an email from the head of beauty and wellness of anthropology directly saying hello I love your crystals can we have them in anthropology please did you just fall off your chair it's just that in this moment yeah and I probably did then too like <laughs> I'm like I just couldn't believe it. I was like I just went in the shop for insane you know it was just insane so we just moved to America and I had to get an order of like a thousand plus boxes together I had to have my mom come over to America and we we're packing like manically to get this order for anthropology so my boxes were in wow um, American anthropology and then after that so that was a big thank you universe I'm on the right track I'm doing what I love and the universe provides the next thing was I got an email from a publisher saying we've actually it was an agent. It was an agent. Um, and she said, um, I've been given your name. Um, I've got a publisher that's looking for a crystal book. Would you write it? And I was just like, oh, my God, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I was like, I've never wrote a book, but I, you know, my dad said I'm good at writing. <laughs> there we go. So there we go. And I went for it. So there we go. I wrote a crystal book. And it was very much on the face of like, in my as I'm talking it's you read it it's like I'm talking to you like it could, it's, it's a little bit all over the place but lovely and it's good for people who are just getting into crystals and are just opening their their senses and and kind of like connecting so yeah wrote a book <laughs> yeah it's an amazing book and I love that um it's which you know you you stand for this in so many ways but you're really encouraging that um, development of the personal connection with the stone mm. rather than saying this is what clear, uh, clear quartz does and this is what rose quartz does and this is what um, tourmaline does, whatever. Mm. You're very much about well, how does it make you feel and yeah. what, what message does it have for you? That's and so different and refreshing. Well, I, what I found through experience, Sarah, is crystal wants to do something different for everyone yes you can google properties of rose quartz yes it opens the heart it surrounds you in unconditional love it brings the pink ray to expand and it opens you to self-love wonderful but there'll be specific layers within that of what it wants to do for you which is very unique and and that can't be written in a book so i mean <laughs> so that's why I'm kind of open the space all the time when, when I do crystal workshops for you to tune into the crystal in your own way and for example I'm, I do crystal courses and the first thing we do is when we explore a different crystal each week is like okay I'm going to guide you to tune in now I'm just going to guide you through the connection and you have your experience you take that experience you sit with it and then I'm going to tell you about the crystal I'm not going to give you any pre preconceived ideas because I want you to make your own have your I don't say mind feel I want you to feel um so yeah that's a really big part of what I do for example like just to give you an example clear quartz and I'm waving a massive clear quartz <laughs> point at you right now from Brazil actually that's this amazing is a, this is a Lemurian one it's like such it holds so much light it's incredible it really holds the space but clear quartz isn't necessarily known for its grounding abilities. If you wanted a stone to work with that grounds you, typically go for like brown or black stones that really bring all your energy into your lower chakras and hold you like solidly. Now, clear quartz, I remember I was just, I was spinning out a lot. I'm very airy, as you can tell. I'm a bit all over the place. So much is open. And I remember saying, to, tuning into my heart for a moment, I dropped in. I was like, I really need a stone to support me with grounding. What should I use? And what dropped in, as I saw it in my third eye and I heard it was clear quartz. And I was like, what? <laughs> clear quartz wants to ground me. Well, you know, you've got to listen. So I worked with clear quartz and it brought all my energies 
in line through my chakra column and down into my earth star below my feet. And I was just amazed really, because when you read anything, and this is what I mean about reading other people's words, when you read anything about clear courts, it's about elevating and lifting and taking mm -hmm. you out and expanding you. you. Don't necessarily read that it's grounding. And that's just a, an example of how, you know, the most unlikely crystal might want to do something that's totally different from what you preconceived ideas of what it does, but go with what you go with yourself and what you heard and what you feel you, your body needs. Um, yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, you mentioned earlier about crystal and oversoul, and can we can we kind of expand a little bit on what the energy of the crystal is? Because you know, what is it? Is 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 there spirit inside this in in the crystal? Um, what are we connecting to? What is the property actually coming from? Mm. Well. In essence, it's it's the earth, isn't it? it? It's the earth because it comes from the earth and it's mined from the pockets within the earth. So it holds, when I talked about how, where the land where you get your crystals from is really important because that energy of that land is imprinted on your crystal. It's part of what's made it what it is. So it's it's connecting, connecting to crystals is connecting to the earth um, inside. I mean, I had a weird experience when I was younger and I didn't understand it, but I went on a journey um, and I was a crystal. Like I saw myself as a huge clear quartz and I was like, that is a mental. How can I be a crystal? Like That's bizarre. But I've always held that with me and knowing that like, yes, on some level, we are crystallizing. Our, our yeah. cells and our atoms are becoming more crystallized as we ascend, as we evolve, as we raise our vibration. That is happening. That's fact. We're going from a carbon based template to a crystalline one. But this is beyond that. Like I was literally a huge clear quartz <laughs> I was like what is that so what I've learned is as I've grown and as I've tuned into so many different planes of awareness and consciousness because I work with many from the angels to star beings to obviously always through um divine oneness and source but the crystal divas um and over souls I I've learned that that one of the first ages that we came to the earth was uh, and worked with crystals in such the most inherently beautiful connected way was Lemuria. And in Lemuria, I'm holding this as Lemurian quartz. Mm -hmm. In Lemuria, we used to create crystals through. So we were a five dimensional template. We didn't have bodies. We didn't have physical bodies. So we could shift the atoms and the molecular structure. So in Lemuria, when we came in, it was there was so much beautiful alchemy and connection with the earth and so much um we really understood the plants and the crystals in a big way in Lemuria when we came in now we used to create the crystals ourselves Lemurian seed crystals were created by the Lemurians they hold their consciousness in Lemuria we had this diamond template that had this beautiful and when I see go back and look at the look look at when I'm in Lemuria Every Lemurian has like this diamond in their heart. Now I believe like that's a diamond seed template and I believe it's their, their heart chakra center was so ascended that it was diamond, and it would glow in their chest. And it, there was just their heart, it was just, their heart was so big. And from that energy center, that diamond template, they would create the crystals through liquid light, through alchemy, with working with the water, with the air, the earth, it all came in. The Lemurians were really close to the water, massively. They were kind of water priestess and priests. Um, but they'd create this. So in essence, Lemurian crystals are part of their consciousness. It's part of them. So when I saw that vision of me being a crystal, that was me tuning into how I've created Lemurian seed crystals in the past. Um, so I believe every crystal has a light in them um it has like a almost like a little it's a crystal it's a being to me it's a being that I can commune with that I can converse with um and when I talk about oversoul energy I often come in so the best example is recently well I wouldn't say recently I think it was uh god about it could have been about six or seven years ago now there was a pocket of pink amethyst found in um, Patagonia 
And I remember going to Tucson Gem Show. I haven't been for so long, but when I went, I used to love it. I mean, it's a, a love hate really, not so much hate, but it's it's quite a hard place to be around, be in. It's one of the biggest gem shows in the world. And it's absolutely, I mean, there's like stadium, football stadium size, um, kind of just spaces of people selling crystals from all over the world, um, wholesale and, and some, there's beautiful pockets of it and I found beautiful collectors one year I went and I found this oh this beautiful deaf guy and his passion was stones he was a geologist and he found this amazing pocket of um, golden selenite and he'd taken all the photos of the site he talked to me about it and I remember just kind of, that was part the highlight of the trip for me I didn't I don't like the big sellers but this this one guy who just adored what he did anyway I, I took all that golden selenite off him and um, that found amazing owners and guardians but going back to that so Sarah remind me where where was I the there pink amethyst. Oh, <laughs> pink amethyst thank yeah. you so this pink amethyst that's found geodes of it in Patagonia now you can get pink amethyst in Brazil now it's it's easy to get hold of but back then this was the first find I really tuned, really connected with pink amethyst, this, these geodes that they've found. And they're really incredible heart openers. They're a bit more of um, a punchy energy than rose quartz. They're a bit more purifying. I don't know if you've worked with pink amethyst. No. Have you got some? I think so, no. I have some. I haven't got any. Okay, maybe it's one for you to, <laughs> to Maybe I need to get some. Up. Yeah. Um, the reason, so the reason I talk about that is when I tuned into pink amethyst, Archangel um, Chamuel came in really strongly literally showed me the crystals with his wings around them and all of this pink light and obviously it makes sense because Archangel Chamuel is you know the angel of divine love and really resonates with the pink ray and this is pink amethyst you know <laughs> it's the same color you know the same ray yeah uh, he came in and he said that he had really um been part of the finding of this pocket he had guided the people to find it because it was at this point in humanity that this energy was needed to really open up the connection between the heart and the higher heart because pink crystals and pink amethyst resonate with the higher heart the thymus gland so when i talk about oversoul i really connect with that story so as in archangel chamuel for me is like an overlighting guardian of pink amethyst so when i work with pink amethyst only really do i connect with the crystal um, and its messages but I Archangel Chamuel just comes in and his messages come through that stone too so there's a lot of guardian energy around around specific crystals and it can be very varied <laughs> and there can be yeah. a few of them you know so <laughs> protectors I like to call them that's amazing so there's a, there's not just the property of the crystal itself the connection to earth its own energy the energy of the oversoul or the guardian or diva mm -hmm. or goddess but then you've got the the color ray so you've got the kind of the color frequencies as yes. part of that as well i love working with the rays and the flames and when mm. you work with the crystal that's a really really great way to connect in with them so for example the, the most obvious one for me that's jumping out is amethyst so amethyst with that beautiful violet color really obviously connects with the violet ray of transmuting of releasing and and letting go so when you'd work with amethyst and this is how i'd guide anyone is like when you connect in with a crystal so hold it to your heart and you're, you're going to start to attune to its energy field and that's when like so whenever with a crystal I imagine it has its own aura it has its own energy field around it that's what i feel just like we do we have our own aura and when you hold it to your heart and open open your heart to it open your palm chakras open your heart open your whole being your energy fields merge with each other and connect and there's an exchange and there's an attunement to each other's vibration that the crystals vibration drops in with yours um and it just connects with you on a deeper way and i'll always say you know if you're holding for example amethyst when you close your eyes imagine this crystal is now glowing from the inside and it's light and as you bring more awareness to it and actually if you've got a crystal now and you're listening to this you can do this so you hold it to your heart close your eyes and just breathe into your body breathe into your heart and start to see that bring all your awareness into this crystal into your hand where you're holding it and just welcome its energy in because welcoming its energy is important you know we need to kind of invite it in and be open to that and as you do for example amethyst its colors violet's going to glow around it and as it glows brighter and brighter and brighter you can then begin to breathe that amethyst light in the violet ray in through your body and fill up 
that way. But you can also imagine this violet ray around this crystal intensifying, intensifying and growing and growing. And then you call it into your heart. And a lot of the time I say to someone, you know, imagine that crystal from your hand has just jumped into your heart or just dropped into your heart. And there it's going to sit in the flames of your heart. I believe we have a threefold flame in our heart of beautiful pink, gold and blue that's spiraling around the center point of the heart. As that crystal's energy just sits in your heart and expands with the flames of your heart, with the color of the ray that it is moving through your heart center in all spaces and places. And it starts to just expand on every breath in to your body. This light ripples and expands through your heart to fill your chest to move up to fill your throat, your shoulders. It continues to move up through to your third eye and to fill all the spaces and places around your brain. In your pineal gland, up to your crown and out. And at the same time, as you bring awareness back to your heart with this, with this light rippling through you, it moves down, down through each chakra center to fill your solar plexus. It drops into your sacral your root and expands and at the same time it's expanding through you, rippling through your water, through your blood, through your bones, moving through every cell, every atom, moving through every muscle, every tissue, every membrane, touching all. And moving out through your body and expanding through your space. And in this moment, I would advise and guide you to just feel where that energy of that crystal wants to move in your body. So just watch this violet light from this amethyst move through your body. And if you're not holding amethyst, it's okay. Energy knows no limits, no bounds, has no boundaries. It can move through. So you're calling that amethyst energy through you now to transmute, transmute, transmute through your body. Follow its violet flow through. Be aware of, as you scan your body from top to toe, just be aware where it moves, which organs it moves to, which chakra centers it sits in, where it intensifies its light in your body now. These are the spaces and places that need focus, that need release, that need attention. Okay, and we thank the crystal guardians of amethyst, <laughs> Saint Germain and the violet flame, and all the angels I was overseeing this. I, okay, okay, you can open your eyes. That's a very impromptu wow. <laughs> moment. <laughs> so you guys, oh. Ameth amethyst, I must say, recently has really been stepping forward to help with um there's a lot of fried nervous systems out there um a lot of people at the moment um and I'm a reflector in human design and that has incredibly helped me understand <laughs> what I see what I deeply feel in my body is translating for others but um I've noticed a lot of um people are in fight and flight at the moment um and there's a lot of um rewiring going on through the body and what's really needed is amethyst and I think that's why it's come up today is because amethyst really supports the nervous system um and this isn't like something read in a book this is just me purely sitting with amethyst and saint germain and talking but not even talking listening listening mm -hmm. to what it is so we need to be working with that and and imagining the violet ray going through our nervous system from uh, head to toe and you can imagine it like it's in your body or you can imagine it as you're watching it happen, like the third person. It doesn't matter. It's still the same. It will still have the same effects. But Amethyst really, really wants to calm, slow, more, more off. Um, most importantly, is slow, slow down um, get on the impulses in the nervous system. And actually, look, I'm tapping on my chest so there and it's you with this happening. <laughs> There's been a lot of that recently. I've been bringing tapping in a lot to the to oh, the gym, wow. not knowing what I'm doing. You know, I'm not like you. I don't, yeah. <laughs> but it's very intuitive. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Look, anything that sends this a yeah, message to the brain to that you're safe mm. is is a good thing. Mm. So, could we just backtrack there a little bit because <laughs> there's a that, lot, right? <laughs> that was incredible, by the way. So, wow, and amazing. Um, and thank you. 
like that was just so so beautiful and grounding um the light language so I was going to ask you about light language and it just pours out of you when you're in this <laughs> um tell me about your journey with light language language what it is how it works how it helps like uh, you know obviously we could do a whole separate podcast on light language um but because it's you've just brought it through there and some people may not have heard of it before yeah I mean it's not a new thing speaking in tongues has been around Mm. for a very long time and I know that there's a lot of people that would say they go to church and when they're you know this is just an example like that that speaking in tongues would come through when they're in communion with God um they just it would just come out and uh, so it's nothing new I think it's it's kind of been called light language uh, because I think for want of a better word we don't really know what to call it it's um Mm -hmm. but for me it's I call it it's it's a bit cheesy but I call it heart song like it's part of me what I believe light language is is when I'm speaking it it's me speaking I'm very clear that it's not me channeling it's actually me connecting to an aspect of myself and speaking from the heart because um and it just flows so it it first started I hadn't really heard of it before and I'd started a journey with um so I do a lot of sound work and frequency with uh, singing bowls and different instruments and and um, I'd started a, a training in, with crystal singing bowls. And one of the things was you have to tone with the bowl. And it just opened, so I would say sound opened me up, opened me up. And it opens a lot of people up working with sound um, singing bowls and crystal singing bowls. And um, I remember I had to tone a note and I was petrified because I love to sing. I've sung since a, a very young age. Like I was in church choirs and chamber choirs and went to competition. You know, I just love singing. I don't know if I'm necessarily very good at it, but I, I love it. And I think that's all that matters, um, especially all the angelic music. Um, but um, I switched it off. Like I just closed my throat up through when I was growing up. And I I was, um, I remember I was in a production at school and I had to sing a song about losing someone you loved. Wow. And it was so raw for me because I was mm. 13 and I'd lost my dad and not processed that at all. So I closed my throat down and I was like, I really connect. I cried every time I sang the song to the point where they were trying to get understood his infamy and everything. But I was like, no, I'm going to do it. Um, but I related. I had all this grief in my throat and I closed. I was like, I'm not worthy enough. All sorts of things. Anyway, so sound forced me to open my throat. I toned a note that day. It came out. It wasn't even light language, it was just a note, but it was a very high pitch note that was very cleansing. And um, I felt like everything stopped. Like that moment when I opened my mouth, I felt in such peace and such happiness. And I felt oh, my whole body relax. And I remember I felt like the time stopped and everything went quiet in the room because it was a big room of people. And there was a lady next to me who I didn't know. She looked at me and she was like, do you see, I'd stopped and I opened my eyes and she looked, she was staring at me like, <laughs> and she was like do you sing and I was like no I don't know I don't know I like you know and she was like well you should because you have the voice of an angel and I know I I don't I just that really just opened me up sounded and from that day light language poured out of me it was like I had reconnected to an angelic part of myself that I had suppressed for so long and it was just pure joy that came out of me and it was like a wave I couldn't control it it was like a tidal wave coming through and I had to open my mouth and do it like it was the biggest initiation Sarah because here I am I don't like to be seen I didn't like to be heard I I have a massive thing with my throat that's been my biggest chakra center to clear um, and here my guides were thanks very much let's just make us speak a different language and like <laughs> that's not going to get any attention is it like throw me into the fire so I had to learn that it's not about me none of this is about me mm. none of this is about I have to step out the way and let it flow through um, so that's been a big big lesson and and it's just gone from strength to strength the more you surrender to something the more it opens up for you and um, yeah, light language flows through me. It's an amazing, amazing. The way I describe it, Sarah, is you have to you feel it. It bypasses the human brain and, and thought. Like you can't really explain it because the human language is very limiting. So to all these frequencies, it's just frequency that's coming through. Yeah. It's clearing. It's activating. It's opening. Um, 
I started first, so the, the sound and the languages came out and it was about two or three languages at first. And now I have specific ones that I, I know the energy signature, like this one. Um, is <laughs> joy it's palladian so they come that's my palladian signature that's my palladian multi-dimensional aspects because we all have so many aspects and so many things unseen going on so i as I've grown, I've, I know the different feel of them and the as, uh, what's coming through. There's a very ancient earth language, which is really connected to Africa and shamanic wisdom that comes through. That's very like, oh, it's like when I play the drum, <laughs> that one comes through. Like It's very earthy and it's all different, all different, different. It depends on who I'm working with as to what comes through. Um, what I find with um, light languages, you just have to close your eyes and listen and it's how we, it, it feels it changes it can change dna molecular structure it can help cellular cellular rejuvenation it can open the cells help you remember it it can do so much because it is just frequency that's all it is it's a series of frequency that's that that and what i find is um when you speak it others around you that resonate with that frequency so for example that why i just spoke was very palladian um, and the Pleiades, the Pleiadians were the ones that seeded Lemuria. They're very beautiful. Um, I mean, the Pleiades star system is, is huge and there's lots of different planets within it, but they're very heart centered beings that are teachers that want to, they live, operate, think, feel, move through their heart, and they bring the teachings of like wisdom through love to this earth. Um, so working with them oh, it just opens your heart. They work with the blue rose, blue ray energy. Um, which is really about like standing in your truth, um, will, courage. Um, so when I work with that, when I speak that, what I inevitably find is people who respond are Palladian too, because they <laughs> recognize it. They recognize a signature. They'll message me and go, oh my gosh, what did you just say on that recording? Because I really felt it. I'm like, you feel it because that's your signature too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what light language is about. It's about activating and waking up other people and um, to the parts of themselves that they've forgotten um, and that they need to remember because when we can connect to those parts of ourselves we understand more of us and who we are and what we're capable of um, and that's massive and limitless and it's really really special so I think it's an amazing thing that's happening it's really I'm noticing more and more people yeah like speaking it talking about it which is really cool um, but it is something I believe we're all capable of, like it's in us if we can kind of connect to those parts of us. And it could come out as, for example, it's spoken, but also movements. So like when mm. um, I speak, the movements of my hands go, and my husband jokes to me, he's like, it's like you're signing. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I kind of am, but when I'm doing it, the movements come in and I see it as moving energy um, and also clicking onto certain coding in people's light bodies. Um, so movement is a really big thing to express it as well. But also if you're creative, it flows through in like um, arts as well with like when you paint or if you, you can bring specific, write specific light codes come through. And that's something I do as well. I translate light codes and that I can see in, in the earth and the grids around the crystals. So yeah, it's a, it's a whole, you know, conversation and everyone has their own piece of wisdom about it. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's important because, like I said, the biggest thing is la our language is very limiting. Um, and for me, it's just helps me express a little bit more of who I am. Um, and that's and that's important because it can help other people connect with pieces of who they are, too. Um, yeah, yeah, I remember you um, feeling really nervous for it when you first start to share these in live events and, and on Instagram and stuff. And mm -hmm. actually the act of doing it has broken through the barrier you were holding in your throat as well so you've not only helped you but then activating others helping others and the mm. frequency pieces I mean linking back into crystals like the crystals are a frequency we are frequency the light and the sound are frequency so color and um light language and crystal bowls and you know we are just all different levels of frequency and you know yeah. using um 
different energies that, that we're drawn to can help us improve our frequency. Absolutely. Um, I just, I believe we're all beautiful songs. We all have our own harmonies. There's always, like I mentioned when I was younger, I'd hear the angels sing. Well, I believe everyone's light body gives off a song. And sometimes that's how you can find disharmony in their field and blockages because it won't be singing as, as loud in certain places. But we are, there's a really amazing song, We Are Created by Sound. I don't know if you've heard that song. No. Lovely, it's lovely. We Are Created by, I can't remember the lady who sang it, but it, the song is called We Are Created by Sound. And it's really simple. She just repeats that over and over. <laughs> but we are created by the sounds of the universe. And she talks about singing with the trees and the bees. And it's lovely. I mean, my son sing it a lot because you're absolutely right. We are just, we are just, sat, we're not just. You know, we're, we're <laughs> not just like, anything. Yeah. yeah and that's why sound as a healing modality is so important so important to break through and crack open at this time and that's why again with light language because that is sound that's mm -hmm. why so many more people are turning to like learning instruments singing bowls and um, and uh, tibetan bowls because it's really important in our awakening really important yeah but um actually while we're talking about light language and the throat I would just like to share a crystal that's coming through that is if anyone wants to work on supporting and strengthening their throat um it's coming in it's just been plopped in my like you must talk about this one blue kyanite that's exactly what I was thinking <laughs> that's so weird I knew it yeah yeah <laughs> There you go. Um, there are many beautiful stones to connect the throat, but what's coming through for this, these, your listeners and, and mm -hmm. them to tune in, blue kyanite, it's a really, really strong, um, uh, I want to say masculine energy um, that's going to hold. It's not necessarily just masculine, but what it's presenting at the moment as giving that strength, that solidarity, solidarity um, to work with that on the throat to help open um not just the front of the throat the back as well because you've got to remember our chakras open both ways but just placing a bit on your throat if you have some or calling that looking at an image of blue kyanite and calling that energy to you if, if we're talking about over souls and guardians archangel michael is really close to blue mm. kyanite he's said to hold a blue kyanite flare sword flaming sword that he helps cut through you know um, blockages and distortion and any, anything like that but work with blue kyanite and Archangel Michael together and ask him to bring in the ray of uh, blue ray into your throat for, for <laughs> oh, here we go, I'm coughing now. <laughs> 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 to bring in some clarity, clarity, focus, strengthening, um, awakening, awakening the throat. And, 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 and so if you are interested in light language or you feel it's come out, maybe the, I always find with light language, Sarah, I drew, before I spoke it, I dreamt it. Like I keep hearing different languages in my sleep and I'm having conversations in my sleep with my guides. So at first I hear it in my dreams, then it just do, 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 filters through from my soul shush, soul shush, it, my throat then brings through another, another part of me. But yeah, dreaming it is, uh, is uh, normally a sign. Like if you're hearing those languages in your sleep, they're going to come through. But yeah, blue kyanites. I'm also really feeling um, aquamarine. It's a very different energy. It's another Blu-ray energy and it's one for the throat, but it's very gentle. It's so different from blue kyanite where blue kyanite is, it is that masculine energy that says, come on, we're going to do this. Let's get on with this. It pushes you. Aquamarine is another great one for the throat, but it's more about the mother. It's more about nurturing and holding. It really connects to Mother Mary's energy. Um, and it's pure. It's such a pure frequency like water. So if you work with aquamarine, imagine this, imagine a wave of aquamarine water coming in through your body and just clearing an opening um it holds a very beautiful pure light like a aquamarine but it also looks uh, like a pure white light emanates from aquamarine that will really um align your higher from your throat up to your soul star throat to third eye to crown especially likes to sit in the crown and open you up Whereas kyanite is very, um, it's, it's a quite a solid energy that if it sits on your throat, it will move down to your heart and it will just hold you. Whereas there's more movement in aquamarine because it's more watery. So I'd say either one of those, it'd be interesting because aquamarine is quite feminine, blue kyanite is quite masculine. So if you're wondering, maybe look at a 
picture of both of them or if you have a crystal see which one you're more drawn to because that would be interesting in itself because yeah. of the different qualities you're asking and what you need more of at this time for your throat but those two would be really good to help you open and activate your throat so your songs can come out um and also blue kyanite important to mention is a really good tool for um excavating and digging up past life um patterns past life it's good for past life healing it's one of the ones that i use a lot but it's quite an intense energy sometimes i'll put it on someone's throat in a session and it will fall straight off <laughs> and that's because they only need probably just it to be there for a slight wow. a little bit of time. normally when crystals roll off you it's like they've done their they're job done. <laughs> yeah they're done yeah or it's done what you need to do or it's it's maybe a bit too much at that point and you need mm-hmm. to do it for a little that session or whatever but yeah blue kina and aquamarine amazing for opening and finding your voice and finding strength and confidence um in what you're saying um a lot of it is about strengthening confidence yeah yeah and i think that's so important at this time like we're we we are recording on women's uh day international women's day um and we are also we've just had a full moon in virgo last night we are shifting into a new three-year cycle this month saturn's moving into pisces i think um so we are you know things are changing new earth is is accelerating we need to be speaking up for what we want and and create the change we want to see so our voice is extremely important right now it is it is important but it's also the gentleness of the voice like we don't need to be forceful in what we say we just Mm. need to be in in our um in our softness as well but owning that that soft side of our femininity um it's yeah for me recently it's been very much about letting go of the doing I'm always in this state of I need to do 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 I need to achieve and do this but (laughs) actually it's (laughs) you're laughing do you feel the same at the moment oh yeah (laughs) always and and you know what I find social media really hard to get on with because um at the same time I meet amazing people through it but then in the same breath like the comparison you Mm. know you see all these people doing everything and you think well I don't know about anyone else but I do I think oh my gosh I should be pushing myself more I should be doing more and actually my message has been like personally but maybe it's for the collective too so we just need to be in the flow like we don't need to do anything we just need to be here a lot of the time I think we forget we're really powerful and like we we're doing so much multi-dimensionally because like um, let me tell you we are there's so many parts of us doing so many things up there that um yeah we've we it's because we're not conscious of it but we need to be reminded we are doing so much and sometimes we just need to be still and we just need to be um and that's enough you know yeah (laughs) yeah I mean just just using our words to our family to our children you know expressing ourselves in in them in our authentic way is absolutely enough um you know and and being silent and still is also I mean that's what I keep getting anytime I do any writing um any messages from the Akashic Records are just like silence switch everything off you know stop looking for other people for advice just sit on your own and be silent I'm like okay I will someday (laughs) so hard isn't it when there's so many distractions and yes when you have children as well but look also distractions all around us and Mm. we're bombarded with such streams of information and it's like attention spans these days are a lot less and because it's like give me all the information now you know Mm -hmm. but I have I'm writing this book Sarah and it's taken me five oh I don't know maybe it's about four years so far um to write and it will get done but it's reminded me of what you're saying because there's a a, it's about the Magdalene Mm. it's about um so I started to write it with uh, this beautiful crystal skull I have that uh, it's called Svalorite it's crystal called Svalorite which is incredible it opens up ancient streams of wisdom it helps you connect to different ancient parts of yourself and bring all that wisdom through and in a very clear and concise way so this skull found me and what it started to speak French to me. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> it 
<laughs> like I don't speak French, but I understood it on a soul level. But I, I rem- it started telling me all this stuff, and I was like, okay, in, in English now. But what came from that was I was presented with a Magdalene consciousness of um, these really beautiful Magdalene who work in South, uh, not work. That's a really weird thing to word to say for them. They don't work. They love what they do, but serve. <laughs> devoted, uh, devoted to the Magdalene in the south of France, the the mountain Saint Blaume. Is it? I think you've been there. Haven't yeah, you, Saint Blaume. Yeah. Yeah. So Amazing. she came, this Magdalene lady came in um, as an oversoul, not as oversoul, but she came in as holding the Magdalene consciousness to communicate. So then started this beautiful journey of, I started to write with her the rituals that the Magdalene go through, the purification rituals, the ceremonies. Um, and one of the things was that really struck me is whenever she'd take me on a journey to meet the Magdalene, they'd always be in this dark space, whether it's a cave or underground or in the mountain. Often it was in the mountain, would always go into the mountains. She would always say to me, many mountains have many secrets. And, and <laughs> the, the, most of mountains are like where the dragons come through, but also there's vast pools of light of water underneath mountains with a crystal. A lot of them, I mean, oh my gosh, we could talk so much about that with the crystals in the mountains and the grid work. But We'd go in and to a, a re- and, and the Magdalene would just be sat there in a circle and it would just literally would be silence. And they would talk to me about how silence is, is the way in, is the way into the heart, into the body, into the soul. And they would just sit for hours in silence with each other. And it always struck me as like <clears throat> the opposite <laughs> of what yeah. I do. Yeah. But it was so simple and it was like I'm just writing about it and about their lessons on that and, and what it means to them was so, um, it just changed everything for me. Um, just the fact that they looked at each other and they'd commune through the eyes and everything, nothing needed to be said because yes, they were telepathic, but it was being communicated through the eyes and they healed through the eyes without words. They just look with loving glances And that would be how they'd take their energy into the body through the eyes. So there were so many beautiful things. It just reminded me of what you said. Wow. Well, I can't wait to read that book. (laughs) And (laughs) maybe we should go to St. Baum together because me and Dave went looking for the cave of eggs and we couldn't find it. That's what you said about the mystery. the, The mountains hold many mysteries and secrets. It was really difficult. Even the local people couldn't point us to this cave. Oh wow! And we we met with other people on the track because it's off piste basically. The there's the entrance to the her cave, the grotto, yeah. and then you there's another track and you go off the track and that's where he's supposed to be. It's on Google Maps, but you can't find us. So maybe you'll be <laughs> able to direct us there. <laughs> well, there's a bit of my language coming through. Can I share this? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Okay, that was just a little bit of Magdalene energy. Okay, <laughs> it's still coming through. Wow, thank you. There's, there's, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot there. I mean, like I said, there's a lot we could talk about. I know, Christ. <laughs> um, okay, so back on track, just because we're going to have to wrap this up at some point. Um, people will ask, how do I choose a crystal? You know, yes. how do I know what yes. I need? just some like basic tips okay <laughs> let's go bring it back to three <laughs> dimensional three let's dimensional three. <laughs> yeah i know i've been really careful with my language as well i didn't want to talk about collapsing timelines <laughs> no. i love it we need to do another um, podcast I think, yes, we do. Um, I think, you know, when you connect, when you say, how do I choose a crystal? We'll stop that right now because a crystal chooses you. Um, You don't have to, that's overthinking it, you know. Um, You just go into, say, for example, if you're in a crystal shop, um, it's the first crystal that you want to hold. That's the one that's chosen you. You'll always, if you're in, yeah, if you're in amongst crystals, you'll always inevitably be drawn to one and pick it up. Or then that's the stone for you, and that's the one that you need to be working with. Um, 
it's it's so easy it's you know I think it's when we start to bring our mind and over, over complicate things with the thinking and the thought that it, it kind of it st stops that lovely free flow of connection um but I do believe crystals choose you I think there's always a really wonderful message in when you get crystal gifts from people um I remember I was when I had the shop open and it's still open sporadically at the moment um because I'm doing a lot of different things but um I bought, I sent some selenite to a friend and um, she said to me after that she'd had a birthday and she'd had selenite given to her by three people. Wow. <laughs> so that's a clear message in itself that she needs to be working with selenite. Selenite is very much about divine light and clearing and cleansing and connecting you to the angels. So like but that was her message. So listen to the gifts, the crystal gifts that people pass on to you, the crystals that people give you. You obviously needed needed to work with those. Um, how to choose a crystal? Honestly, I just think it's that simple. Like you just you just need to it chooses you. It'll come into your dreams. Often they come into your dreams. You'll just get a nudge from spirit. You'll see a picture online and be like, oh, that one's amazing. Oh my God. You just have an instant reaction. That's yeah when you know it's it's something an energy you need in your life for however long it needs to be and then you can you know move on to the next wonderful one um and then what was the other question how to work with them when you first get yeah them? yeah how what do we do yeah so kind of cleansing mm -hmm. connecting cleansing connecting so i um there are loads of ways to cleanse crystals I mean it's really boring like talking about it because you can read it everywhere like you know you've got your basics like water I always cleanse mine in um if they're a crystal that can be in water you want to check that first because things like for example selenite is quite a porous crystal and it's quite flaky and it breaks and it, you don't really want to put it in water mm -hmm. um, but most corpses are okay in water I would always put them in a natural water um, I would take them to somewhere special, a stream and put them in. But obviously that's not, not everyone can do that. So just mm. running under the water. It's funny because I always do warm water because I find that my crystals tell me off if it's too cold. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, oh, you know, they, they really respect, respond to temperatures often. You know, in the past I've got, because crystals can go into hibernation. Seriously, the energies in crystals can close down if you don't work with them. And if not close down, that's the wrong word, go into hibernation. Take a, a break. Yeah, they yeah. take a break if you're not working with them. And then, but so for example, when I've got a shipment of quartz in from Brazil, from that lovely family I told you about, they've gone through such a process to get here that they're freezing cold like in the physical when I unpack them they are freezing cold their energy has gone into hibernation because they are cold so I always have to work with warm water to like bring them back talk to wow. them, show them love and um, so my main way of cleansing them would be sound um people can use if the energy workers they can use reiki um sage any kind of sacred smoke cleansing smoke um at the moment it's an interesting one I'm moving away from like palo santo and I'm trying to connect with a herb that my ancestors would have used for cleansing because I feel that's more in line with what's appropriate for me. Um, I can't tell you what the herb is yet. <laughs> I haven't found it. <laughs> I've still got a stash of sage, but I'm like, no, I need to use something that's more appropriate. <laughs> but right, I'm just waiting for my ancestors to tell me what that is because actually that's another fun story. My, Hilarious. My ancestors my ancestors are, I come from a long line of a matriarchal society, one of the only ones left on, on the planet. And I believe that's why I've come into this line. I wanted to be in this really strong line of women. Um, and they, she, my grandmother comes from a hill tribe in, in Northeast India and they're stone people. Like they have massive monoliths in their forests, in their sacred groves. Um, and they, they, they're plants and uh, stone people. That's They talk to the stones and they heal with their hands. So, Well, that is exactly um, you. <laughs> yeah. So it's in, that's what I chose to come in, this beautiful line of ancestors. Wow. And but so when I work with them, I use sound, I sing, I clear with um, my singing bowls, tuning forks are really great as well to play around them. Um, water, but when you run it, you know, all of these things, like I can reel off all the things you can do, but if you don't do it with conscious intent, it doesn't mean anything. Mm. So for example, when I say water, yes, you're going to run it under water, but you're actually going to connect with the crystal, connect with the water, be very conscious in the, in the actual ritual of it and be holding in your heart and in your mind that, you know, I would like all the 
um, any negative energy, any lower vibrational densities that it's picked up, can it run away with the water? So just holding that intent is just as important. Like when you when you sage them, is is again asking the sake, asking the consciousness of the plant to come in and help you just kind of release all um because crystals build up a lot they build up and they take on a lot of energies around them so it's really important to cleanse them as often as you can and especially with protective stones um that you're calling in for protection they need a lot of cleansing um because they will they will be working overdrive to protect you and to hold that space for you so you need to keep cleansing them so um water i mean People will use moon, moonlight um, mm -hmm. to charge with moon, lunar energies. I'm not one of those that does. Um, sunlight. I, sunlight is my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I, I would never put my crystals out. I mean, I'm not saying it's the wrong thing to do. I just don't feel that that's what they need. Um, for me, it's sunlight because it's charging. So I always charge. I would always cleanse uh, with water and sound. And then I'll put them on the earth in my home to say welcome to this earth this is this is the part of the grids that are connecting with at this time and then I will if there's sunlight I mean today has been snowing here I don't know <laughs> <laughs> if there's sunlight I will put them out in the sun and ask the solar energy to charge them um so that's my process of of, of cleansing and preparing um in ceremony these stones ready to go to new guardians I'm trying to think if I've missed anything with charging them and i'm working with them you know it's just just building it's about building up a connection and a relationship you have to put the time in you have to um place them on your body and do you know what i did in the the connection before you know breathing in their light breathing in their energy welcoming it into your body a really important one is to release any preconceived expectations it's really hard, isn't it, when you expect, oh, you know, someone's told me I need rose quartz to open up my heart and it's going to do it instantly. Well, it's not always the way you have mm. to work with it and you have to be open to that change. And it could be really difficult. I couldn't work with rose quartz for years. I never had any rose quartz around me. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah. yeah. And that's because I wasn't ready to love myself. I wasn't ready mm. to go there and like see all the things I didn't love about myself so I could heal them. So I knew when I started to work with rose, so all my workshops on crystals would be, we're going to, we could work on the heart with rose quartz because I felt I needed that too. So I was kind of bringing in a bit of what I needed. But so the moment I started to work with rose quartz, it was a light bulb moment for me. I felt like a real big milestone. Wow, I've come you're ready. Big, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready to actually go into my heart to a deeper level now because I've accepted that energy in um but yeah you just have to work with it you have to it sounds really silly but talk to them um <laughs> if if you know you're new to crystals consider crystal skulls now this is something that some people are very like some people don't like them I mean have you you've got crystal skulls I don't you? I have a dragon dragon's head um mm. that I got from your book launch but I don't actually have a skull well crystal skulls are really great I mean it's you know it's a bit marmite for some people they mm. might think oh I don't know it reminds me of death and all that you I know, think that's, the boys that's... would love it the boys yeah the yeah, boys do totally my, would, son yeah. loved it. my son's got a big bumblebee jasper skull that literally arrived the other day and he just went oh mommy, what's that and I was like <sighs> I knew instantly. you know as we're saying the crystal chooses you I was like, show me. And he just picked it up and he's like, can I have this one? I was like, yes, you can have it. But it was like that instant connection and it's a skull. Um, but skulls are great because it's like a little person and you feel like you can have a conversation with it. Mm. Sometimes it, ta it takes on more of a personality and it could be easy to start that conversation. Yeah, that's a good point, um, yeah. When working with crystals, you know, the best thing you can do is just, when you work with its energy, welcome its energy into your body and you feel the parts in your body it flows to. And I said, you know, they're the parts you need to focus on. Well, then you can open up a conversation with this crystal and ask yourself and journal as well. Ask yourself, OK, so what is that I'm feeling in my body? Is it mine? What emotion is it? If I could give it a color, what color would it be? You know, you just have to you have to be asking the questions. And yes, you're asking a crystal. But at the same time, you're asking your own intuition, you're asking your higher self. And the crystal is supporting that because its energy is coming in to like just hold you and help clear and help move and help open and whatever other lovely things it wants to do. It's it's this lovely support for that. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're the things we do at the beginning of tapping. We tune into ourselves. We work out what emotion it is, where it is in the body, what color it is. And mm. then we start tapping. So like, actually, you've you use the crystal to start that connection with yourself 
and then go a little bit further, go a little bit deeper. And I remember you years ago did a video where you um you tapped on the points with the rose quartz <laughs> tumble stone. Um, that was amazing too. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I think we've covered like a hell of a lot of ground and I, I, it will absolutely be helpful to people. I think this kind of preconceived, like I need a rose quartz, I need um, a clear quartz, I need a grounding stone, I need, I need, I need these particular things. We don't, we don't need that at all. We just need to go with what actually calls to us, what we feel drawn to. And I think yeah. that would be really helpful for people. And another thing is just quickly to say what, what kind of dropped in when you were saying that then is like the colors, like, I always say to people, look at your crystal collections. You know, I know people listening to this will have crystals. I just mm-hmm. feel like they would. Yeah. <laughs> the kind of audience that would have crystals, Sarah. Yeah. Have a look at what crystals you've got around you, which ones you have close by your bedside, because there'll be a theme. There'll be a color theme for sure. And you'll find you've got lots of purple, you've got lots of blue. And if you've got lots of blue and white crystals, it's because you desperately need calm. You need stillness you need peace if you've got lots of red it's because you need more fire more activation more grounding in the root so just start to be aware of what so again talking about the colored rays what you have around you it will tell you about what you need really it's almost like working backwards you don't have to choose they're already telling you a story it's just you just have to bring awareness to that yeah and with with the crystals you already have you could maybe get them out see what what you are drawn to in this very moment reconnect yes. with it re-cleanse it and yeah. set an intention with it and and start to communicate with it and then you know the we can't be working with all our crystals at all it's all the time can we it's kind of we have we kind of pick and choose what we need in the, in the, in those special moments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if that was the case, I mean, although I'm planning, I'm doing a retreat to Mexico in a few weeks um, oh with 14 God. women and we're doing a crystal skull activation. I went and, oh my gosh, the, I don't know if I've got time for this. We've got to- <laughs> Got five, five minutes. minutes. <laughs> got five minutes. I, so I love crystal skulls, and I really am about the wisdom of crystal skulls and how they were used by the ancients. And um, I went to this amazing divine feminine site in in Tulum, in Mexico, called Muyil, which is a feminine temple. And I was at this step temple, and I was really connected. I could see the geometry and the grids, and so much was coming up, and all this pink light everywhere, pink, pink, pink. And I circled. I was guided by the, the guides to circle a certain amount of times and to tap on the stones with with a clear quartz I had to activate something in the grid uh, to support witness something going on and as I did this temple just unlocked like a Rubik's cube in my third eye and this huge crystal skull came out and there was crystal skull consciousness in this temple that was held there from a very long time ago and it was releasing and the guardians came in and they were these amazing ET looking beings glowing with pink soft pink light and they had feathers all down their ears and down their backs and I said to the lady I was with I was like I communicated what I saw she was like they're Mayan guardians the Mayans always used to wear feathers all the way down wow. so it's like so they told me to to come back to the site so we're going back for a crystal skull activation and we're all taking a crystal skull but it was amazing because I circled around and I looked at the information board about about the pyramid uh, about the step temple and it said it was the main religious complex in the whole of this jungle temple system and um it was called known as the pink temple <laughs> which made me smile because that's the light the loving wow. rainbow there but um yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready for that. And you know, going back to like all the crystals and wanting to take them all, literally my suitcase is majority stones, no clothes. <laughs> it's just, and they're like, and we want to come and this one wants to come. And this, oh God, it's just, wow. honestly, it's a lot. It's very chatty in my house with all the crystals. <laughs> I can imagine you never get a break. Like with the no, most wanting attention, like little crystal babies. Um, how can people work with you and do you are you working one-to-one with anyone at the moment or is it just online courses what are are you up to um I uh, would love to do one-to-ones but I find it really difficult because at the moment my thing has been I just need to reach more people um as many as I can uh, for activation specifically to activate their cellular and open help open and lock 
Um, so I do a lot of courses. My crystal course I have online that you can that you can do. Uh, the one I'm doing about, at the moment is about Lemurian crystals, um, and they're all recorded. I do I love workshops, so I do a lot of crystal workshops that are all available on my website. They're like hour journeys where you can just be guided to connect with the crystal and the guides, and that they're really magical and powerful. And we go to all sorts of amazing places. Um, writing another book and another oracle deck. Um, Crystal Oracle deck, which will hopefully come out, which feels like 2024, 20, which feels like ages away. <laughs> but I'm just, yeah, I'm just writing and I think workshops and retreats and um, in-person events, they're like my passion. I just mm. like to share. So um, the best way is like online workshops at the moment. Um, I do specific one-to-ones if there's something really, um, I do a lot of conscious conception and, and womb womb healing um, and ancestral line and past life but it's you know it's very hard Sarah you know what I'm like I'm like I have to be in the flow of something and there's so many things going on that oh I know yeah, yeah oh, it's yeah, hard yeah. to get hold of me <laughs> I'm totally honest I'm like dancing through different worlds oh I know and you have to, to- you have to prioritize your energy and and do what you're called to do in any given moment. And I think you're really good at that. Actually, you're really good at going at, you know, right now the shop's closed because I'm working on something else or right now and the shop's open because I have the space. So I think that's really admirable and, you know, honoring your energy and what you can give at any given moment. So I hear you. Thank you for that. I'm trying. (laughs) Thank you. Boundaries. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. (laughs) Thank because you. we all need to be doing that to be fair um yeah. but yeah thank you that was amazing thank you thank you thank you <laughs> i can't uh, wait to listen back um and for all the lovely light language and and frequencies and your love and joy i am honored to call you a friend and i you know can't wait to be <laughs> see you in person you. i know i know i know big hugs thank in you so much soon. So fun. Thank you. Uh, Have a wonderful day and lots of love. Lots of love, my love.